Okay. Uh, low impact and full body toning is where we're starting today. Okay. So if you, if you don't know what my little rags are for that is for this lateral glide okay and i could do it without the rags i could be on my carpet doing it you could just be step touching but i like the feeling of having to push something and keep a connection a foot to your object that is allowing you to glide is very different than just dragging your foot across the floor from side to side. So this is my preference and um, I can make do in lots of different environments, but this right here right now allows me to use these little towels and I'm just warming it up. Now, if you don't feel like going a uh, super long stride, then shorten it up, make it a little faster. I don't want to, I don't want you to always feel like you need to be in my rhythm. And often when we're in mirroring mode, um, that might be exactly what you're inclined to do, even if it is at a sacrifice to you getting a complete movement. So this is the thing about you being able to see something and then scaling it, whether it's length of motion or time spent doing something, right? If your knees are really tender, then you might be in a faster, higher position uh, drag from side to side. The more your legs flex, right? It resembles a squat. And that squat may be too much because when you draw down, if you feel binding over the kneecaps, then just let, don't subject yourself to torture, increase your speed, take the squat action out because you can still do your drag, right? So whatever position you're in, whether it's on the carpet, on the floor, with rags, without rags, what I'm going to do is I'm in a quarter turn because I need to give myself enough room to move four repetitions, and then I'm going to come back towards the screen. So four repetitions, one, two, three, maybe you're step touching, bring it back, four, three, two, again, four, three, to bring it back. So I hope I've given you enough info for you to pick your best position. Right. When I come back and I get close to the screen again, I'm going to quarter turn and square back up to the front. And now I'm going to go two, one and two, one and two. Can you I'm going to use this side over here as I move to this side. When I complete my two, I'm going to quarter turn and do two repetitions like this and then quarter turn again, right? So quarter turn, one and two, one quarter turn, one and two quarter turn. If you're like turning at a different time than I am, don't worry about it. We're just trying to make a little box. And now we're going to reverse quarter turn one and two, clean it up two to each side and then quarter turn. It doesn't matter. You're just trying to get around in your little box here. One and two. You should have one more quarter turn that brings you back to your squared position. Single slide. And now. I'm gonna scoot back and this is taking me into a reverse diagonal slide. Again, I don't have to bend my legs very much, right? And I can still do diagonal slides, bring it forward, right? I like the glide, right? So my knees can flex, go back four of them, four, three. Sometimes when I give this movement, bring it forward and I watch people, 
they're taking such a, um, it looks like this, right? They are doing diagonals, but it's so sharp of a line that they lose the rhythmic glide, come forward. So make, make it so you're truly doing a lateral drag with a slight diagonal. Go back, lateral drag with a slight diagonal versus really sharp, shallow line go forward you've got one more time to go back and forward and then we'll be off our little towels push 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 come forward last time four three two and you're all done with that and so that was just what we were using today for our rhythmic limbering right all right and just like that body temperature is starting to rise can you put your pillow down? It's time to do our little step training. Okay. Oh my goodness. So I am trying to figure out my system <laughs> so that I can have kind of stages of um, a mess by not dismantling everything at one time. I have started with the upper level and I'm, I'm bringing the Christmas decorations down and kind of getting everything in order. Um, <laughs> because I'm hoping by uh, Saturday, switch legs that I will have everything put back in its place, right? And we don't have any big um, uh, plans for, uh, New Year's Eve celebration, but we are going to have dinner with some friends that um, will not take us into the uh, 12 o'clock hour because none of us stay up that late. <laughs> Other side, what I want you to do is step tap, but I would like to have everything put away and back in its place um, as orderly and as stress less as can be for me switch legs so rich has just uh um taken himself out of the equation and and it's on my timeline push pull although i'm very concerned about what we're going to do with this tree because we bought it alternate legs for me we bought it and we never had to store it we brought it out of the truck and brought it into the house and this thing is uh really heavy <laughs> And the box is really big and it's not gonna be stored in a closet upstairs. So in the garage, we have these hanging, um, it's those suspension storage racks, um, but it is not easy to push a hundred plus pounds over your head on a ladder with two people. I'm not even certain how that's gonna work out. <laughs> Give me a step knee pull. So, I'm being optimistic though, pull, push, pull. So now I'm going to stop. You keep going. I need to scoot my little pad forward um, so that I can get more of a drive, right? So hopefully I haven't thrown you off too much. And now as I turn to the side to show you what I mean by that, when you come off your pillow or your pad, you do not have to travel very far from it unless you feel like your body is kind of raring to go. So the harder you step back, right, the stronger you have to be in your forward drive, because now we're gaining a little bit of oomph in our step. Why? If your body is warming up, then you should feel like, ah, the muscles are like, don't hold me back. But that's a sensation again. Everybody has a different response to movement, comfort, right? When are you ready? And on this next step, come up, march, 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 march. Okay. Don't worry about my block being crooked. There we go. Layers. Layers are hugely important to help your muscles stay warm until they've been internally warmed. Get to one side, step touch, okay? So often, for example, I was at the gym last night and there's a man that I know there who 
he comes to the gym, but then he leaves and he goes on his run. You're going to come across your object and step touch on the other side. So he came in and he was in shorts, but a long sleeve thing, right? Pullover. And he's like, oh, he's like, I'm trying to talk myself into my run. Can you go across side to side, up, up, off? And so as we're talking, I said, well, you know, your body's gonna warm up. I was like, you know, you've got layers on. I was like, and then it dawned on me as a runner, what do you do with your extra layers, right? So when I'm on the pickleball court, you're gonna come to this next side over there and I want you to step and abduct. You're like what's abduction? If you can't abduct when you step up to your little pillow, then get off your pillow, do a step touch side leg raise. Try not to make the leg raise this um, explosive leg raise. It's just a sweep out, right? Lateral line. So then as soon as I was like, oh, go on, you should, you know, you come this far, go on your run like you normally do. And he's like, but it's gonna be cold out there when I hit the beach crossover. And I was like, ah, that's right. And I was like, cause you can't, unless you're prepared to, wrap your shirt around your body but that's what i noticed is like so often we do not prepare we don't dress in a way to keep us externally warm until we internally warm up crossover and that's really a thought for our muscles do one crossover right? and for those of you in cold country right? You might have already adapted yourself, but the, um, to allow that gentle internal warming to happen before you come and strip off layers to have enough layers on to need to then strip off layers is actually really important too. But all of these little things do one more finish on this other side that add up to our long term well being of our body. You're done with your little pillow. Can you get your ball? Oh, yeah, ball time. So we are going to, oh, you might want to put your runway down so that your feet aren't all slidey. If you don't have the luxury of having a big rubber mats for your flooring, then you probably will need your yoga mat. So not dissimilar to our walkout that we do when we're in our mobility um, class. I want you to walk out and you're gonna get right into bridge mode. So C curve, walkie walkie, put your head on the ball, Lower the hips. You want to feel like your feet are right under your knees. All right. Lift the hips by doing your pelvic tilt and then go into the bridge. So let's just knock out 10 of these. All right. Your arms. If your hands are on your belly, then your palms are turned in and that's uh, encouraging this forward shoulder roll. So can we tuck our wings back and then let the arms extend with the palms up. So if you don't get your wings folded under you in the right way, then what will happen is it will feel very unnatural for you to be in a palm up position. Your arms are at a downcast angle, right? Fingertips may even be touching the floor. Curl through the tailbone, bridge up. If when you lower your hips, your head wants to lift off the ball, then you may have your body supported in the wrong way. Okay, how many things can I tell you can go wrong here? Stop on the down, don't just lift. First, you pelvic tilt, and then you raise your hips. 
And when you get to the height, right, of your wherever your stop zone is, I want you to then pull your navel in deeper and see if you can pelvic tilt more. Lower the hips. Something that happens when we're on the ball is in the lowering phase, your body is more inclined to go to S curve. So that makes it all the reason why it's even more important right here before you lift to pelvic tilt so that you're lifting with the correct muscles. We do not want to pinch and crimp the low back because we are failing to be in pelvic tilt. If you could maintain your pelvic tilt, which you can, it's a learned position, try not to drop the tailbone back into S curve. So stay in pelvic tilt, raise the hips, tilt deeper, and now put your mind to muscle and go, how do you lower one vertebrae at a time without losing your pelvic tilt? And you will really feel the load through the derriere. Stay in pelvic tilt, push up. Two more, lower, keeping in pelvic tilt, raise in pelvic tilt, lower in pelvic tilt. And you should have a nice burn going on right under the buns. So here we are. We are in bridge and you're going to keep your feet apart. And I want you to try to march your feet without letting the hips sag. All right, so you're in bridge, belly to spine. And if you feel like you're rocking side to side and now you're using your fingers on the floor to keep you from rolling off the ball, be okay with that, but try to tell yourself, okay, I'm not really supposed to be using my hand, right? You're supposed to be controlling your navel to spine and you're in a slow enough controlled motion right? And if you are really strong and your body, you have massive amounts of awareness and control, you will be able to arc your leg to a nice high leg raise. It is gradients of control, right? So as you go and you might explore a higher leg raise, be prepared to have your fingers ready to help you balance, right? Because if you take yourself to a new place, you might need a little assist, five. And also four, just because your ball doesn't stay put doesn't mean you're gonna fall off of it, right? and release. Head is up, walk yourself back. And I want you to intentionally get hung up in the midway back to up position. We good? One hand goes behind your head, like you're getting ready to do a crunch. All right, we're going to lay the shoulders back down. And now I want you to walk back a little bit further to the point where you feel like your head and shoulders are gonna dip down a little bit below the hip line. All right, so now you're bowed over your ball, squeeze your buns, your ribs, right? And your hips are kind of in tabletop spine, right? Tabletop alignment, and then do a little lift up. Take your stretch. If everything is feeling okay, slide both hands behind your head. When you lower yourself, if your trunk stops, but then your head floats back, you are not in the right alignment. So we want to teach the body to move as one piece right now, where you're stabilizing your head and your neck and your torso crunch and the lowering phase is done as one piece moving, not in segments, really important, All right? So your hands are supporting your heavy head. The elbows are pulled apart from each other. Try to focus your gaze forward, not straight up at the ceiling, right? Because we want a little bit of chin to chest positioning three, we're counting down, two, one more. Now, 
pull up, take the hands from the head, sit up, use your hips, use your feet, your abs. They should be like, oh, that's what work feels like for those, right? Come up, move your ball out of the way for a moment. I want you to grab your light dumbbells. For me, that's gonna be my two pounders. Maybe you need a little drink. Hmm. So I've been wanting a drone. <laughs> I got two. I <laughs> Rich bought me one. And then I bought one not knowing Rich bought me one. So the one that I bought for myself is like one that you would give a kid, like trying to learn how to use something that's not expensive. So Rich buys me like the Mac Daddy really expensive one. And I'm afraid to pull that one out and put it together because I have no idea um, what flying a, a drone um, is going to <laughs> bring. Although it's something that I've wanted. So I've opened my less expensive one. <laughs> keep going, you're doing your lateral raise. Okay, keep going. So it's, it's a small little booklet that, the instructions, right? Like 15 pages of instructions in this small little booklet that I feel like it's, it's a, it's like a pretend book <laughs> because the writing is so small. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm like, okay, well maybe the pictures, maybe I can just use the pictures to show me what it is I need to do with this thing. <sighs> I figured out how to charge the battery and so that's where we got to. I had to uh, pull it out, set it up. Fortunately, there wasn't any assembling other than trying to figure out how to insert where, where the cord was supposed to go into the battery so that I could charge it. <laughs> Everything is so small. Pull the arms up and pause, turn the palms. Now, I want you to draw your elbows towards your ribs a little bit. And when you do that, even though you're using light weights, I want you to imagine that you're grabbing handles and there's tension and you're pulling in because can you see that if you grip, it actually flexes the bicep. So you're gonna push out, shoulders down, Close your hands, make fists, drop the shoulders, try to pull the elbows to you. And then like they're spring loaded, stretch them out, inhale. Shoulders down, make fists, pull the elbows in towards your ribs. Uh, push, pull, five, pull, push, four. You don't have to stand in place, push, Three, if you're staring at yourself in the mirror, get close enough to your mirror to watch your bicep flex. Uh, stretch last time and release. Okay. So I want you to feel like your weight is light enough. One pound, two pound, three pounds. That's probably as high as you're gonna need to go to the point where you may have to drop the weight if the shoulders talk back. So you're gonna have arm and leg. And I'm just going to get going to the side. We'll go this side so you can see arm and leg are going to be in movement together. Big stretch, reach up, full backstroke, reach up. And when you go step forward and you reach up, come up to your tiptoe on the rear foot. And when you drive back, rock. Like, look, it's like this pushing back, like you're almost doing a squat. The front leg is in full extension with toe up. The arm comes down, the legs trade places, reach up, come up to the tiptoe, squeeze the buns and abs, rock back, take the back stepping leg, bend it so that you can drive the hip and straighten the front leg. Wow. Step forward, lift, pull back, bend the back leg, straighten the front leg. Step forward, raise up, pull back, squat, release. All right, how much of that did you get through? The basics, arm and leg go together. Come up, 
Now, if your shoulder is protesting through any part of this, you first take the weight away. The next thing is maybe you have to soften at the elbow so that it's the elbow that's doing the drive, right? The focus is on what the elbow is doing. But if you don't have any pain, then I want you to feel like you're drawing outside of the lines, way outside of the lines, right? Make it bigger. Come up, pause, stride back, take the back stepping leg, soften the knee, the hip drives, take the toes on the front leg, raise up. The brain is going, okay, am I doing it? You are. Stand up, stride forward, raise up, get up off the heel of the back leg. The body is long like a piece of taffy that's being stretched. Stride back, bend the back leg, and everything floats down. Look at your front foot, raise the toes on that foot, and for a moment, you're here still, because this is the hard part. Come up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, step, pop up, push back, sink down. Again, lift, pop up, push. Did you fall out of balance? I just did because I took myself into too slow mode. Squat, 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 down you go. Toes come up and release. Both arms. So that was forward swing to reverse arm extension, right? Now, you've seen those swimmers. I'm gonna drop my weight for a second. It's the butterfly, right? That is what I think is like the hardest stroke in the water. So we're gonna try to do that, right? Turning to the side, you don't have to, I am, cause I don't wanna be looking with my head up forward cause that's not where our, where our gaze is gonna be. You're gonna be looking down. You're gonna push your arms back. As the arms clear the hips and start coming up, I want you to stand up push down, big stretch. And now however bent you need your arms to be to get this circular cranking motion in, that's what I want you to try to do. If you have to drop your weight, then go for it. Here we go. 10, nine, eight. Your feet are about three or four inches apart from each other. Load the heels, push. Six, try not to look forward. Look down at your imaginary mirror. Four, three, two, pausing on the down. If you came back up, come back down. Lateral, you're doing rear delts. So look down at your feet. Two to three inches apart. Push the hips back. Try to bring your chest and your abdomen down to your thighs. So if your legs are straight, that's not gonna happen. We need to have our legs bent, the hips back, and your trunk long. Pull the arms apart. Pull. A little bit faster now. Five. Why do I want you going faster? So that you don't flip the arms up too high. Five more. Five, four. Everything should be on fire. Three two, stand up, drop the weight. If that didn't generate some heat in your body where you feel like your heart rate's pumping a little bit faster, then that's, you created an environment that was very safe for yourself, which is perfectly fine. You have to decide <laughs> if you're wanting the low impact portion of our workout and what we do with our weights to keep you at this really low energy expenditure, or do you want to feel periods where your heart rate actually elevates itself? Right? Something that maybe isn't on your radar, but that is on mine is this, how strong are our lungs? How do we even rate that, right? Bring your chair into the equation. Isn't this 
this is like something to ponder. Why would we even ever have to think about lung capacity, strength of lungs? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. I have some ideas. Textbook, do I know what it means? Clinically, do I know what it means? Do I have an inkling based on my years of experience with people, especially as they age? That's the key component, lift one leg. So the thing about respiratory, elevated heart rate, what are we doing? We are taking a smidgen of what I call active rest, okay? So in your best seated capacity, we are now engaging core stabilization work to work hip flexor and quad, right? Just you holding your leg up and then trying to extend the leg makes this front thigh engage and when the foot is off the floor, the hip flexor is kind of in charge there. And also your phenomenal abdominals from the belly button down. So if you're just sitting without the intention of lifting your body into its best sit and drawing your navel in, then you're missing out on half of your workload. Push, pull, push, pull, 10, you count. <laughs> seven, six, five, and then I'll get into the rest of the story. Four, three, is it starting to feel like a heavy leg? Two and one. I may have gypped you one, my apologies. Okay, other side, resituate yourself, shoulders out of the ears, spine long, chin tucked, belly drawn in, the leg is lifted. You don't have to lift the thigh much higher. It just has to be high enough so that your foot isn't kind of getting stuck hitting the floor, All right? Can you link the exhale with extension? And the last component is as you extend and exhale, draw your navel through your body. Inhale, it expands. And then like an accordion, all the air comes out and everything gets really tight and firm. So here we go. You're just gonna go, try not to count. Listen, as we age, <clears throat> we are less inclined to run around. Seems very weird, right? We get used to moving our body at certain speeds because we are creatures of habit. We are dealing with ailing kind of crabby parts that keep us from being springy in our steps. Five, four, three, you know when I feel it too because of my story time stops and relax. <laughs> but let me just tell you this. We do need to be able to elevate our heart rate without feeling like we're going to get sick. If you elevate it too high for too long, it kind of can leave you headachy and kind of not feeling well. So there's a fine line between being comfortably resting and then accelerating your heart rate a little bit so that it gets out of 70% of max. But do you know that you can go 70% of max all the way to max? Like there's a huge degree of space there and stand up as, cause we're going to prove it. We're going to run our little, little, uh, our own little test. Okay. So here's the thing. Naturally, when you start moving faster, just prance a little bit oxygen, your muscles need more oxygen. All right. So how uncomfortable can you make yourself, but still be in an okay place for your body and increase your lung capacity? This is 
I'm planting the seed because now I want you to consider something. A lot of people have an endurance literally to go for hours like this, because depending on where you are in your life, right, age and ability, your body's muscles can produce energy for an extended period of time. But as soon as you go out of your comfort level to move faster, try to move faster, try to move faster. And my fast doesn't need to be your fast. You're just trying to move faster. Maybe you're standing in place, just trying to move yourself a little bit faster going, how do I not bend my legs so much, but I'm trying to move faster. Try it and stay with me. You're just going to keep trying, keep trying, do the very best you can, right? Very best you can. So if you were able to take off and run a sprint, that's what I want you to think about your body doing. You're not going to take off and run a sprint, but you're just going to try to move faster. Like, look, like, you know, if you've ever seen, um, like football practices, right? They like get their feet apart. It's like they're running through tires and they're just trying to move their body. Now, slow down. If we can get our body used to moving a little bit faster for a short period of time, what it does is it causes you to intake and expel with greater force. This is how we keep our lungs strong, right? It is not through forced deep breathing. The deep breathing takes place all on its own because of the body's need. So it's very different than us sitting in a comfortable place and going, because there's not an increase of respiratory rate when we're in comfortable deep breathing. The respiratory rate that we force our body to work harder and the heart needs more, um, you know, the blood, the oxygen, walk yourself around because we're going to do that one more time. You, if you move yourself, right, that's not necessarily low impact. You do not ever have to move out of your spot or pick up the balls of your feet if you will bend your legs and kind of get your arms and knees doing this. You don't have to move out of your spot and you can get the same benefit that way. So when you think about this, I'm going to be moving around. I want you to just go, okay, here we go. My speed and yours may differ. You may decide to sit this one out, but I want you to just move. And then I want you to think about what is it going to take for you to comfortably increase your speed. For me, like it shows up for me when I'm on the pickleball court. Now, the thing about pickleball is that often you're lucky to have the to have a reaction with the ball from for eight to 10 hits. So sometimes it's just that you've taken a couple of steps in one way that are faster than the other, but that's over so fast that your heart rate actually doesn't have a sustained elevated position. We want to feel like the ribs and the diaphragm need to expand to allow us to breathe deeply. So here we go. Do another 30 seconds, whatever it takes. Maybe you're moving around your place. Maybe you're shuffling your feet. Maybe you decided this is why jump rope is so good, but guess what? So many people go, my parts are so old. I can't spring off the floor, release and relax. <laughs> That's the truth. We don't have to be aggressive with our body but we have to be, we have to think outside of the box a little bit on how to generate enough training at different levels of heart, target heart rate levels, right? So 220 minus your age. I have spent <laughs> countless hours trying to get across this point with clients along the yes yeah, so i've done my years and years of training you're going to bring your chair 
and one of your heavy weights back into the equation, your chair is going to be being used as a prop as if it was a bench for us because today we're going to get into single arm dumbbell rows. Okay. So back in the day, I used to work at a club and new people would come in and by that, I mean, new members would sign up. And part of my job was to give them new member orientation. Who wouldn't want that, right? With new member orientation, you get to tell people what are some important things that they need to know about as they undertake the beginning phases of their training. Take your arm, stretch. Gosh, so much has already happened. The hand that's on the chair goes with that forward leg, okay? Working arm, long stride back leg, soften your knees, tabletop spine, push your hips back, right? You are going to pull your shoulder blade away from your ear and then glide the elbow up. The arm moves not in a straight down, straight up position, but it's almost like it takes a little bit of a sawing action forward, shoulder blade glide, elbow slides towards the ribs. If your elbow is flared out from the body line, you have not, say the words with me, retracted the scapula. Glide, slide it back. Glide, slide it back. Inhale. Now we're going to put a little more focus on the bicep. So when we row the arm up, we're going to turn the hand so that the palm is forward. Don't come up. It should almost look like you're at the halfway point of a bicep curl. Extend the arm, turn the palm towards your object that you're braced on, slide the shoulder back, Turn the hand, squeeze the dumbbell, pull the elbow in towards the side body, stretch. And here's what I see a lot in the gym. I see people driving their elbow up way above the body line and their head down and their upper back all rounded. And yet they're just heaving and hoeing. Don't make that mistake on my watch. Lengthen your spine, lengthen the arm, glide it back. You should feel your elbow stops, right? And has nowhere else to go because your upper middle back muscles are retracted. Four, stretch, three, both shoulder blades pull back, two, both of them and release, relax, other side. So I want you to think over your years of training that you've done with your emphasis being on cardiovascular conditioning, how many times have you walked, just walked or walked into the gym, gotten on a piece of cardio, right? Elliptical, bicycle, treadmill, and just la -di -da, looked at the clock, you watched your little timer on your machine, tick off 30 minutes, 30 minutes rolls around, you get off and then you move on. Why did you do 30 minutes? Did you ever even reference what was your heart rate doing in those 30 minutes? What was your start heart rate? What was your heart rate training rate? Did you give yourself recovery time before you stopped? Like these things, that was my responsibility to teach people. They have a responsibility why waste your time? What don't you know about what you're trying to accomplish? What key elements do you not have an awareness of that makes all the difference in whether or not your training is effective? Heart rate is one of those. Do you think professional athletes don't know what their training heart rate is? Do you think they ever get on a piece of anything without actually having an idea why am I doing this? Stretch, pull, right? That is why I spend a huge amount of our time together educating you, right? And part of it is their little reminders for me about how much really goes into 
taking care of our body and what are the things that make the biggest difference. Stretch your arm down, glide your shoulder blade back, turn your palm forward, squeeze the weight, and when the elbow gets neutral with the rest of the body, that is the stop point. If your elbow drives up higher and higher, we know that the head of your shoulder has not been positioned into its depression, and so you're not able to get your retraction. Wow, stretch row, stretch. Why do we need to work our back muscles? Why do we need to think about the strength of our shoulder blade and our lats? Stretch and our rhomboids and our traps. Stretch, pull, reach, retract. Because we don't want to be looking like we're all hunched over as we age. We want to have our cleanest, best posture line. Stretch, pull five more belly to spine as the arm comes up exhale inhale as the arm comes up make a tighter fist on your bell stretch pull one more pull release and relax one more time we're going to get the heart rate up and then interestingly enough <laughs> because we're gonna elevate the heart rate, we then need to give ourselves a little bit of time for the heart rate to come back down in order for us to comfortably get on the floor and do what we need to do down there. So you're done with your dumbbell. I want you to move the obstacles out of your way. And I want you to think, can I embrace the next little round of elevated heart rate? And here's the thing, what, what I'm saying to you is very relevant, but what if your body is already in a high level state of agitation? Do you think that elevating and stressing your body more is beneficial to a body that's already in high level agitation? And you're like, you're right, that doesn't make sense. If you fall into that, then go sit down. We'll be done in 30 seconds. Shake it out. How fast can you move your feet? Because as I'm trying to give you this very well-balanced class, right, with a lot of structure, a lot of detail, a lot of really important aspects, you have to discern which aspects are relative to me right now in my current present level that I'm showing up to class for. If you're overstressed, if you're overly tired, right? We're not always that way. Some days we wake up and we feel so charged that we're like, I can go accomplish anything. If that's you today, then go faster. Separate your feet. Oh, let your body like just be free. Push five more, four, Ooh, taper down, walk it off. I've always been told there's an interesting thing about my clients, right? And my age in relation to the people that I get to work with. Don't get me wrong. I've trained plenty of people that are younger than I am, but the majority of my clients tend to have some ailments, right? Get your towel, get your foam roller, get a quick drink, let your body start going. Okay, we're moving into the next phase. The next phase is just gonna be a quick snap, crackle, pop for our upper middle back to see if we need any little adjustments. And then we're gonna do something else. So I just wanna make sure when you come down to the floor, you've got your little pillow for your head if you need it. And we're gonna start in a seated position, draping our back body over the foam, right? Just to get a little adjustment. You might not need an adjustment, it's okay. I go, I start with the foam right under my shoulder blades because that allows me to then put my head where it needs to be, good support, lift the hips and walk myself down.
I've spent a lot of time trying to be very mindful of am I am I putting too much like emphasis on the wrong things for based on the body of as it's an aging body this is this is like gosh it's like spending years trying to not predict that's the wrong word i'm trying to be extremely mindful to help our body help it age in a more physical product physically productive right and so i do that is in the foremost that is a primary objective of mine and yet i still wonder right because i'm not the age of my clients am i asking your body to do too much that's the part that make this last position the end release push out of it maybe you got an adjustment maybe you didn't it's okay if you didn't move that because you're done with it sometimes you don't even realize that you need an adjustment right we are coming into sideline position what do you do with your arm if your shoulder does not like for you to be fully extended and your head resting on it because it's too much, then you get your little towel as folded up as you need to. Your arm is out of your way, but yet your head needs to have the support. Now, because of this mic, I can't actually lay my head on my towel or it'll shut it all down. So I'm gonna use my arm and we're gonna take our bottom leg, that leg is forward, top leg is extended and i want you to turn your toe down to the floor keep the leg long let your toe find the floor and then trying to not bend the leg or deviate from toe contact big toe contact you are just going to have your foot drawing a line forward and back. It's not the forward draw that the work is. It's the back draw. And as the leg draws back, you are limited to how far back you can go. I want you to try to stay really still, right? And when the leg pushes back, keep the knee as stiff as you can. And can you squeeze? your bun when the leg comes forward don't worry about squeezing the bun but as the leg tracks back go straighter leg belly to spine tighten up the derriere because on your next slide back that's when we're going to stop and the real work's going to happen hold right here stiffen up at the knee you are internally rotated and that's what's allowing your big toe to connect to the floor Ready, squeeze the bun, belly to spine, lift the big toe, set it back down. So the leg stays straight. The toe continues to find the floor. When you lift the leg, don't let the hip roll back. Stay stacked. And now 10, squeeze the bun, nine. I would hate to think that the things that I put importance on, thinking about how do we create the most productive body as we age, how do we keep the parts that I think need to be strong, strong. So I'm hoping through all of this time that we spend together, do five more, that I'm not missing the mark somehow, right? And with everything that I see, relax this leg, with everything that I get exposed to via social media, TV, other trainers in the gym, I, <laughs> I feel pretty confident that the path we're on together 
is hitting the mark, right? The key component is making sure that you, as you're putting your parameters and your guidelines on for your body that you don't end up doing more than what your body really is capable of doing. And so you have a monitoring phase. I'm trying to help you learn. So where are we? Okay. I'm running into my mat is why I just moved. Your leg is Big toe down, stiff at the knee, and you're starting your line. Just slide forward, pull it back. Keeping in mind that the further forward you swing your leg, I don't have any problem if your leg wants to come all the way forward, but it still needs to track all the way back without you moving your pelvis. So end range is the range we're going for, not what's happening in front of you. And you should be able to tell when the leg gets to a certain alignment, oh, that's when the real work happens. At the part where it's crucial for you to have knee extension, right, and glute activation, you also need to be in phenomenal abdominal control. Slow and steady wins the race here. And now on this pushback, push, none of your trunk moved, everything is still, pull the belly in, stiffen up at the knee a little bit more, squeeze the bun, lift and lower. Here we go. So I have a client that has been for almost three years trying to figure out this hip pain that he's gotten going on. He's had multiple surgeries. Surgery's gone bad. Pins put in the hip. Like not crazy things, just amazing things that you can do, right? To help the body release and relax. And now that he's post-surgery, a year and a half, he's still having excruciating pain, and he's unable to actually really walk comfortably without a cane because his balance is off and his gait is off. And so he finally... Like the doctors and physical therapists have been extremely perplexed by this. We're finishing with a little side body stretch. So if you can't be in crisscross legs, straighten your legs out, let your elbow find the floor. If it's too much of a stretch for the elbow to find the floor, then just reach the arm away from you, soften the elbow, right? So the arm can go into a long stretch, which may pull the bun off the floor. It's okay, okay? So he shows up at class on Tuesday and he says, well, conclusively they've decided that all of the things going wrong in this hip post-surgery, not that he didn't need the surgeries, but now he's not recovered the way that they thought he was going to and it's taken forever. He said, release and relax. It's all, it's all related to my glute medius. If you don't know how important that muscle is, it's a very small muscle that actually keeps you from looking like you're doing this penguin walk. It's a stabilizing muscle. So when we do something very specific, like we just did with that little leg swing and toe to the floor, leg lift, it is to help us as we get older and our glutes get weaker that we keep a very important part of our glute muscle structure strong enough to support our body. Lean to the side, twist, look up, reach up. This really is the last one, you guys. <laughs> Bring it over, okay? Get a little tip 
if you can allow your arm to brace into the leg that helps you to pry yourself open, twist the head, raise the arm up if you can. Oh my goodness, release and relax. You have successfully completed this portion of your day.